Eliza and Kurt from Eliza and the Delusuals. Uh, welcome to Australian Musician. Thank you. How Thank you, you for having Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. So how are you guys doing in this uh, lockdown situation? Um, we're, we're being optimistic. It's sunny outside and... Makes it harder. Yeah, food in the fridge and it's just, yeah, it's... Yes, we it's got so a studio bad. set up, like a little demo studio, so we just... It could be worse. could be worse for yeah. us, for yeah. sure. It, it must be uh, pretty frustrating, though. You're in halfway through a uh, pretty major American tour. Uh, the momentum was building. That must have been really frustrating for you guys. Yeah. yeah um, I think, like, after South by Southwest got cancelled, just... I think after that happened, we just kind of knew that everything was going to sort of have a domino effect and just fall fall down as well. Um, it was really disappointing. Especially when it's something like not in your control, like yeah. like something like this, and it's just you have to watch it sort of fall over a little bit. But yeah, I think it's just what you make of it sort of thing as well. Like if, you, if we were to sit here and feel sorry for ourselves or go, oh, it's all about us or whatever, it's, it's not going to make it. Yeah, any better because everyone's, in the, everyone's boat, in the same so. boat. So, yeah. Yeah. so when you left for the states for the tour, was coronavirus even a consideration? Yeah, it, yeah, it was. So my mom actually gave us a whole bunch of like because she works at um, a, a university, so she had like masks and hand sanitizer right when it started to all like sell out and everything. Okay. Uh, so we did go prepared, and I remember like on the planes, like we just like wiped everything down. Um, I believe at that time, hands. the time we were flying, they'd stop flights to China. Or yeah, something? it was only our, it was America. only in China um, yeah. where they it in was Wuhan, just or something like yeah, that. so that where it had just started, they had like stopped all the flights, and going to the states really wasn't like a concern for anyone. So we just went, we just like were extra careful yeah. um, with like washing our hands. But we were going to shows and meeting like. 50 to 100 people a night after shows and like shaking yeah. hands and giving hugs and stuff like that. So yeah. it wasn't, we weren't even thinking we about it really. Concerned, no. yeah. yeah. So at, at what point did you think uh, it, it's time to come home? We got, we got to the end of the Silver Sun pickups tour yeah. and then we were in LA for, was it two weeks? Yeah, we were we there for two, two weeks, weeks doing riding, riding and stuff yeah. like that. And then we got to the end of that two week period. And we were meant to be going to South by Southwest, but then that got cancelled yeah. probably like, three probably, days before, or four days maybe, yeah. before we were actually meant like, to go. Maybe just under a week out, yeah. and it got cancelled. And then we were like, okay, right. And then we sort of went, yeah, well, let's, we have, we have a friend uh, up in up in the Napa Valley who we had met on tour, um, and he had offered us to stay up at his place in Napa and use his facilities and stuff for like yeah. riding and stuff, which was unreal for us we were like blown yeah away we were gonna go and do that so we were gonna do that and then it turned from like okay we're gonna do that for a week and then we're gonna fly home from san fran or something to in an hour okay we have to like go, go home, home now, asap sort of yeah thing. so things change pretty quickly yeah like very quickly yeah. as soon as we had a plan next hour it we just change. had to change it completely yeah because, so yeah. how do you guys plan to get through this period what what have you got in mind um, we've just got a lot of writing to do <laughs> and, um, we've had, we haven't had a lot of time to finish a lot of like demos and things like that because we've been on the yeah. road and it actually was something that we were thinking about. We were like, when are we going to get time to like s sort of have a break and write, I guess, through the touring. Cause we had pretty much up until like October planned out for us. Um, and I guess now we have more than enough time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're just spend the time writing and, and that sort of thing and yeah, just trying sure. to do some maybe more live stream concerts and things like that. So, yeah. 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 Uh, another uh, thing that happened for you um, recently was that you were picked up as one of the Fender Next artists uh, along with yeah. Skeggs yeah. and, and Running uh, running Touch. Um, yeah. how, did, how did that come about and what has it meant to you? Um, it was a whole sort of thing because I think we reached out, um, like our team reached out about um, getting some guitars while we were over in the States because um, it's like a, it's, yeah, it was a whole thing. And then um, they said, well, we'd love to have you as our um, Fender Next, like, artist this year. And, and um, it was amazing. We got to go to the headquarters yeah. and Bryce, he's an absolute legend. He's from the US and Heath back home um, really set us up with some pedals and we got to go there. And, they, yeah, they yeah. probably kitted us out and gave us, all new guitars and amps and 
pedals and everything in between. So we honestly couldn't have fallen on our feet better in that sense. Yeah, we so were was, very lucky. We were very, we're very, lucky very so, yeah. grateful for that too. So yeah. it, they, what they and do. We've always for... played Fender as well. Yeah, so exactly. I've always played, and Eliza has always played Fender guitars. So yeah. And I've never actually. I bought one new. It was a Mexican series guitar, like a Telecaster. So I've never actually had a brand new. Um, yeah. It Especially was, given to me. It was like American Christmas. American Fender, so it was like Christmas for sure. <laughs> yeah, we're very grateful. And um, what they do for like new up and coming artists on tour, like it's it literally was the most helpful, helpful no thing ever. No other company so, does that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so as a result of that, tell me what your stage setup is. Um, so I got a lovely jazz master um, because they're my favorite guitars. Um, and we all got the... What I got all a the, performer. I, I, the performer, yeah, I got a performer yeah. strat. Like it's like a, a satin blue strat. Kurt's one's coils. really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's really nice guitar, with like a mint green pickguard. Um, and we got the new, we got the new. Um, I actually didn't even get to play that guitar though, because yeah. <laughs> they didn't have the guitar that I ordered right. in stock. I think at the time. So, yeah, so like, I did the whole Silver Sun tour with uh, with Texas other guitar, his Telecaster. So the day I got my guitar, I was like, cool, I'm going to be able to play this at South Island and it on the canceled. advanced placement tour and stuff like that, and everything got cancelled. So now my guitar is sitting in storage with Silver Sun guys yeah. in, um, in LA. But so. they gave us um, the to- – are they Tone Master? Tw- yeah, they gave us Tone Master amps, amps, Tone Master Deluxe amps. They're, they're unbelievable. Amazing. And they're, they're also yeah. like – it's like imagine picking up like a cardboard box. Like that's how light they are. But yeah. they sound incredible. I would say it's regardless to whether they gave us to or not. Yeah, like, exactly. Like they're just of, so yeah, good. They're yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, tell me about the band's sound. Uh, growing up, did you listen to similar things? Um, I think Kurt, and I did. Yeah, Kurt and I definitely stand. had like similar experiences. Like both of our first concert was Coldplay, Coldplay. which okay. is really coincidental. Yeah. yeah. So, and that was probably the reason why we both got into um music. Yeah. Um, Tex and Ruby have very different sort of backgrounds. Like we do, we definitely meet in the middle, but we Tex, have a very eclectic. Taste yeah, exactly. Music um, as a band. and I think that makes it cool for when we are like you know, putting parts and, like, getting tones down. For sure. Um, and it th- adds a little... thing like, structurally yeah. as well, like, with all our songs and stuff, it's, like, bands like Blink-182 and yeah. things like that for, like, melodies and stuff and, like, Coldplay for, like, vibe and feel, like, emotion and stuff like that. Like, yeah. it all, like, sort of meets in the middle. And their live the show as well. And their live show and stuff. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you recently took part in the Isolate Festival, the Instagram yes. music festival. How was that experience? It was so it was good. Cool. Yeah, we had um, we had like we've never had that many people stream like tune into a stream of ours. So that was really cool, um, and we were just hoping that it sounded all right because we didn't have like we couldn't hear. Obviously, yeah, we couldn't we, hear what it sounded like. Yeah. so we were a bit concerned. About <laughs> um, that. But, but everyone it was, seemed to think it was okay. Yeah, it was so good, and it's such a clever idea. And I hope that those sort of things keep happening. Like I know that we're definitely going to do more live stream music. Um, when we can yeah it's a really good thing to be doing right now i think it yeah takes people's mind i off think the bad negatives yeah definitely out in the media and yeah. stuff and just sort yeah. of reel it back in it's um it's a nice time for social media right now like i was saying to someone earlier on the phone today that i think it's the first time i've really 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 appreciated it being a thing and everyone being so connected on it because now we just can't see anyone so yeah yeah, actually, a lot of the bands I'm talking to are, are saying that 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 more than just promoting the band and and selling merch, etc. It's that connection, the the human yeah. connection that's really important at the moment. Yeah, exactly, Definitely. and especially for like a lot of our newer fan base that we were just getting to be in touch with, like over in the states. Um, it's such a cool way we can still keep in touch with them. Definitely, so. and I feel like you can just really. It, it's something. It's not this weird disconnect thing. Like even now, us talking, it's, it doesn't feel foreign. Yeah. It's like phones and computers and like the internet and everything has been in our life for so long now, and I've grown up with it that this doesn't feel too weird. weird yeah. To do. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, we would do this if we were away from each other, regardless. So yeah, yeah. it doesn't. It's not a weird foreign thing. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad I'm not weird. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's it. Uh, your current EP is called uh, "State of Living in." and objective reality uh tell me about that title um well it was the last thing to come about for the ep um so we had everything recorded and done and kurt and i were in new york um just like kind of 
on holiday doing some radio stuff as well. And um, we kind of got the label was like, okay, we need to like, we finally got a release date sort of thing. So let's tie it up sort of thing. So we did the artwork um, just on my phone actually. And then Kurt actually came up with the idea because we wanted something that would sort of encapsulate all of the tracks and just sort of like put the ribbon around it, I guess. So yeah, it was just something that was like, all like from top to bottom in the EP was just like something it felt good to say and like hear when you were talking about the EP and like artwork and everything involved. It was just like, a state of living in an objective reality was like the state in which Eliza was living and we were living really um, at around the time all the songs were written and came about. So it just sort of, it fit well yeah. and, it, and it made sense. And it sounds cool too. <laughs> and it sounds cool. Um, so uh, how can people access your music and your merchandise? Um, at the moment, the yes, <laughs> everywhere on the internet. So we Spotify, um, Apple Music, YouTube, Bandcamp's a really big Band one at the moment. Massive, yeah. Um, because they're helping our artists so much. Um, and I think all of our merchandise, you can go through our website to find it. Um, yeah. A company called Jungle is doing that at the moment. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but definitely Bandcamp for any artist that you want to support yeah, at the moment. Definitely. Um, what are you looking most uh, forward to? Uh, at the end of this isolation? Um, well, we've got, because we have our, because we just got back from overseas, we have like the mandatory, like you can't go anywhere sort of thing. Mm. Um, so yeah. it'll be nice, hopefully, to be able to go and see the beach before um, everything goes into shutdown because we live very close And just to even it. to the point in which we can just even go to the pub and have a beer with our friends I or think something the, the pub and stuff like that. No, but like I'm saying, when oh, at, at the end, like yeah, at the end that's right. The light at yeah. the end of the tunnel. When that yeah. sort of starts happening, it'll be a nice thing, I think. Yeah, definitely. And just like things you sort of took for granted because it was just a thing you did every day or exactly. every weekend or whatever. And just being able to see your mates yeah. or something. Well, when we heard like everything that. was being closed down, like all the non-essential things, um, we were like scared that our favorite Thai restaurant was going to be shut down. Yeah, but, um, I find it funny how the bottle shops are an essential shop. I know, it's ridiculous. But, <laughs> it might have been um, riot on yeah. the hands. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think like just like Kurt said, I think that was really well put. Just like the little things that you just did every day and you didn't think of, now you can't do them. It's like so. when you have a sore hand and you can't use it. And yeah. You're like, oh, shit, I don't I really know how much I use this hand. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's right. So what's a message that you'd like to give out to your fellow musicians out there? Definitely stay positive, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, we're all in in this together. And I think today, like this time, not just today, I think um, this time is uh, to like support each other and be considerate of each other um, and just, you know, keep making music. And everyone's in the same boat. Yeah, and don't don't stop making music because everyone's, everyone has to be put on hold. So you've got heaps of time to write music and put it out there so and reach yeah. out if you're yeah, feeling exactly. sad or depressed or anything like that yeah. it's not there's a whole it's not weird to feel support. lonely in times exactly. like this so yeah yeah i feel very lucky that kurt and i get to quarantine together so i couldn't imagine mm. being by yourself yeah all right guys well <clears throat> thanks for joining us uh stay happy and stay healthy thank you, you so too. much thank you, you so too. much See ya. thank you